Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Usbah, professor for obstetrics and gynecology faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Today, I want to explain a quiz about the placenta, umbilical cord, and third stage of labor. So, let us start with the first question here. Identify one and the two in this picture. One, of course, this is the placenta. And two, this is the umbilical cord. Okay. Then the question at term, what is the size of picture number one? And what is the length and the diameter of picture number two? Number one is the placenta, of course. What is the size? Size including the diameter and the thickness. So the diameter is 20 centimeter and the, the, the placenta is round in shape. Okay. Thickness is about 2 to 4 centimeter. And the maximum thickness at the center. When anybody asks you what is the maximum thickness? Maximum thickness at the center of the placenta. Okay. Not to the periphery. At the center is the maximum thickness and the thickness range between 2 to 4 centimeter and the diameter is 20 centimeter. What about the length of the umbilical cord? The length of the length of umbilical cord range between 50 to 70 centimeter. And the diameter of the umbilical cord is 2 centimeter. So the diameter is 2 centimeter and the length is 50 to 70 centimeter. Okay. Mention two abnormal shape for the placenta and three possible abnormalities for the umbilical cord. For the abnormal shape of the placenta, we have placenta membranacea, circumvallate placenta, succinctoriate placenta, by lobate placenta, all this abnormal shape placenta. Okay, three umbilical cord abnormalities: too long cord, more than 70 centimeter, or too short cord, less than 50 centimeter, or umbilical cord to a single umbilical artery, or true knot in the umbilical cord. All these abnormalities are related to umbilical cord. Okay, the question here about mention the number and the types of umbilical vessels in normal pregnancy. We know that in normal pregnancy we have two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein in the umbilical cord. And in some cases there is single umbilical artery and this occurs with some chromosomal abnormalities and occurs also sometimes with diabetic patient and single umbilical artery has its hazards may cause intrauterine fetal death may cause intrauterine gross restriction may be associated with chromosomal anomalies as i said before single umbilical artery occurs in about 0.2 up to 0.8 percent okay so single umbilical artery is abnormalities which is very important okay because the normal is umbilical cord contain two umbilical artery and one umbilical vein Okay, let us go to the next question. Identify the two surfaces in picture A and B and compare between them. Okay, this is picture A and this is picture B. This is the fetal surface of the placenta. And in picture B, this is the maternal surface of the placenta. Okay. Compare between both. In this, in, in, in picture A, the maternal surface of the placenta is a smooth, glistening, 
related to the fetus okay and that's why it is called fetal surface smooth glistening and related to the fetus and the umbilical cord inserted at the center of it or eccentric in some cases okay and covered by the amnion the covered by the amnion this is the fetal surface go to picture p this is the maternal surface it is rough gray red in color covered by residual parts of the decidua contain cotyledons from 15 to 20 cotyledons this these cotyledons from 15 to 20 rough not smooth like fetal surface maternal surface is rough red in color and contain 15 to 20 cotyledons and they're related to the decidua this is the comparison between fetal surface and the maternal surface okay what are the lines of management of third stage of labor we have conservative management and we have active management conservative management we are observing the mother for vital signs and for any bleeding defining the fundal level waiting for spontaneous separation and the expulsion of the placenta it is called also expectant management so spontaneous separation and expulsion of the placenta the signs of separation of the placenta include gush of blood, per vagina, lengthening of the cord, the umbilical cord increase in length, and doesn't recede between contractions. Okay. Gush of blood, lengthening of the cord, the uterus becomes more globular, suprapubic bulge when the placenta descend in the lower uterine segment okay absent pulsation in the umbilical cord all these are signs of separated placenta then hold the placenta and rule the membrane like a rope so not to miss any part of the membrane and observe observe the maternal surface for any missed part of the placenta, any missed cotyledons, and observe the membrane for any missed part, and observe the perineum for any laceration. This is called expectant or conservative management of third stage of labor. The other line of treatment, which is more encouraged nowadays is the active management of third stage active management start after delivery of the anterior shoulder of the baby we give oxytocin infusion to cause uterine contraction and to facilitate the separation of the placenta and to decrease the amount of blood loss then if the placenta separated and the expulsion happen will and good if not we are going to do rendered anders maneuver with gentle downward cord traction at the, by one hand and by the other hand suprapubic we are pushing the uterus upward in the reverse direction so core detection downward while the uterus is pushed upward and this must happen during contraction so it is called controlled core traction and also called branded andres maneuver this is an active management of third stage 
hold the placenta when it descend and expulsion happen outside rule the membrane not to miss any part of the membrane then hold the placenta between two hands and the lock for the maternal surface for any missing part of the placenta any missed cotyledons and also lock for the membrane for any missing part this is the active management of third stage active management of third stage is preferred with many centers all over the world because it is associated with less blood loss and the hemoglobin of the patient in when you are using active management of third stage labor is higher than the hemoglobin in patient when we use the conservative or expectant management of third stage okay The next question, comment on picture one and two. This is picture one and this is picture two. Here is the maternal surface of the placenta. When you look here, you will find missed cotyledons. This one, there is missed cotyledons. When I deliver the placenta and I locked the maternal surface of the placenta and I found the missed cotyledon, one or more, I should remove it manually under anesthesia by introducing the end inside the uterine cavity and searching for the missed cotyledon and do extraction for the missed one under anesthesia of course okay okay for picture number two the maternal surface of the placenta no missing cotyledons so no remnant inside the uterus so this is the difference between one and the two. Thank you. I wanted to remember you about my textbook, textbook of obstetrics and the gynecology in Mansoura in Egypt. It is available in a bookstore, the Scientific Center of Medical Book in Mansoura. On, uh, for those who need the book uh, from outside Egypt, is available on amazon.com you can search for it textbook of obstetrics and the gynecology available from the start of january 2022 thank you i'm dr alamus professor of obstetrics and the gynecology faculty of medicine masura university